Good morning, good afternoon and good evening and welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this video I'm going to take you through uh, another day tonight. This time this is the Carpenter Arms pub uh, which is in Laycock in Wiltshire in England. Actually they filmed some of the Harry Potter uh, movie scenes in this village and around this area. It's a beautiful part of the part of the world. Um, but what I've done here is I've done a sky replacement and of course the day to night effects and I've also used some generative fill and some remove tools to actually uh, create this image the way I wanted to. So uh, this is the completed image and this is the before image. Grey sky, rainy day, you know, one of those days where you think, you know what, I, I really can't take a photograph today. Uh, I'm not going to end up with anything, anything decent at all. So, but actually the truth is you can shoot in any conditions and if you've got a grey sky, rainy day, really sets itself up well for a day tonight because the contrast is relatively low and that gives you a, a, a really good opportunity uh, to try to do something more creative. So we, as you can see we've used generative fill, we've removed the cars and uh, a few other bits and pieces from this including the menu right in front of the pub and uh, we've we've created this quite subtle day to night. If you'd like to follow along here, the DNG file for this, the original file is, is down below, link for it. You can download that and you can follow on directly. The sky itself, I will also include, this is one of the skies I've taken. I'll include that in the, in the same set, so you're welcome to download that as well. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, then uh, I'd appreciate a like for the video. It always helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you do have any comments, questions or tips to give me, I'm always interested to, to hear what you've got to say. And I do my best to try to um, respond to all of those comments down below. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, it would be great for you to join me on this journey here on YouTube. OK, let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is my normal workflow, which is to go down to detail on the right hand side here and go for the denoise function. Um, although this was shot at ISO 100 and the light conditions are quite good, actually if we if we zoom in you, you will see that there is a little bit of noise, particularly in the darker areas, uh, I think alongside the edge of this car here, there is a little bit of noise there. But we are actually going to make some changes, we are going to use generative fill here to remove these vehicles, so uh, I will I will apply the denoise function to, to reduce the overall noise. So I'm just selecting 50%, happy with that. Um, it suggests it's going to take five minutes. I can guarantee you it won't take five minutes. We'll click enhance here. We'll watch it up here in the top left corner and uh, it will take approximately 10 seconds uh, to do that. I do, do sometimes wonder where it gets its calculations from from the time that it expects things to be done. So that's that's done, there we go. So it's created a new enhanced noise reduction DNG which we're now in so um, if we zoom in on this car there's a lady in her little car there if we go to the non DNG file let's just zoom in a bit closer so we can actually see um, so there's the car there if we bring up the uh, if we bring up the shadows slightly so this is the before and then if we move over to the after do the same with the shadows so that's the after. So uh, before, now you can see the noise in the darkness on the car and after really does clean it up very well. And bear in mind, we are zoomed into 400% there. So it's going to go back to 200%. What we need to do here is uh, I've shot four for the highlights. It was a grey, rainy day. So definitely lends itself to a sky replacement. So we, we can we can use that. So to do sky replacement, we will need to add a little bit of contrast to this image. Um, we're also going to keep the image itself quite well illuminated. So I'm just going to bring down the highlights slightly and I'm just going to open up the, the shadows a little bit because that, that just means we've got plenty of data. When we move over to Photoshop to add the sky and, and use the generative fill functions to remove things, we will also uh, maintain very good depth of color and light so that we'll be able to make adjustments to turn this into a day to night once we come back uh, to Lightroom. So I'm just before I do go over there, I just want to make sure that this is this is straight and, and the whole scene is actually looking OK. So I'm going to go down, go down to transform. I'm going to click on auto, try auto. 
that seems to sort us out. Got a nice straight church spire there, and this corner's relatively straight. But let's go over to guided. Let's ask it to make this corner actually straight. So there's one line, and then we'll take the we'll take the center of the spire there. We'll come down through the window there, and we'll we'll just take that. So that that's not too bad. I, I probably want to. This doesn't quite look right. So what we're going to do is just move that over and just see if we can pull that more to the vertical. And that, that looks better. And I think also with the church, we just want to just want to lean it in ever so slightly. So so I'm happy with that. I'm also going to go up and click on the crop tool. And I'm just going to bring a crop in here. I want to try to keep this area over here. So, But I don't want the drain in here. And I don't want too much of this sort of uh, you know, boring tarmac showing up here um, and there's this huge expanse of wall here which doesn't really lend itself to, to much interest so I'm probably going to pull pull this in I'm wondering whether to come right into there or, or to sit there I think that'll do so let's just go up make sure your um, padlock is unlocked click on custom and let's just see if we can get a 10 by 8 or a 10 by 9 or 10 by 9 uh, sorry 16 by 9 is a little bit too much so let's go with a 10 let's open that back up again and then let's bring this back down here so a 6 a 16 10 ratio works very very well hit return and uh, just going to make sure that we're we're in that little bit tight along the bottom so going to go back into the crop there um going to move that up a little bit and maybe just take a little bit more there. Just hit return again. That feels better. Yeah, that's a better spread. So happy with that now. So now I'm going to go over into to Photoshop. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go edit in. Now I'm still using the Adobe Photoshop beta version. But you, you're welcome to use the standard um, Photoshop version here. 2024 has all the same features I'm going to use. So I'm going to just click on that. Um, and what that's done is, is that there we go, it's opened it up in, in Photoshop. So first things we want to do um, is probably do the generative fills we'll, because we'll, once we've done the sky, we will relight this area with, with color um, based on the sky color. So I'm just going to zoom in uh, and have a look at some things that I want to take out. This uh, fridge cooling system here isn't particularly pretty. So we're going to go up to the lasso tool. We're going to take the lasso tool. In fact, you know, I'm going to right click on the lasso tool and take the polygonal lasso tool, which means I can draw straight lines. So I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to draw around this um, this this little area here. It does it does catch the side of the uh, the side of that bench there. So I'm just going to go up and over, just using little clicks, just to go around, and then I'm going to come out to there, and then I'm going to go back up to that point so there we go there's our selection and i'm going to click generative fill and then i'm not going to write anything in the box i just want it to to sort of replace this area with something appropriate for there i'm going to click generate but in doing so i will speed the video up a little bit just to save time as we do generative fills there we go that's option one let's put a bit of brickwork in there option two a bit more brickwork and option three actually i think option two maybe or no, nope, I'm going to go with option one. That looks fine to me. I'm just going to step over to the remove tool. So you can go into the spot healing brush tool, J, and select remove tool. I'm just going to go back onto the background layer. And I'm just going to make the brush a little bit smaller using the uh, the square brackets to the left of the return key. And I'm just going to take out this, uh, this little bit of cable that there is on the wall there. That's better. So I'm going to hold down the space bar so I can move move across. So I'm just going to take out that little bit of cable there as well. Just tidy that up. That's fine. Wheelie bin's not altogether pretty there. So we're going to go back into the uh, polygonal um, selection tool. And I'm just going to run round the wheelie bin there and hopefully can come up a little bit into the plants come back down and by doing coming up into the plants what happens is it will use this to help uh, select it there so click on generative fill and generate there we go that's option one that down that's worked very well 
option two and option three. So it's between three and one. I'm going to go with one, so I'm happy with that. Right, we're going to move over here, we're going to deal with these vehicles. Now, it is quite a large selection, so with generative fill, remember we are limited by the number of pixels, but this in terms of the overall size of the image is actually relatively small. So this time we're going to change over to uh, the lasso tool so I can freehand, and I'm just going to run around and stay just outside the uh, the vehicle here. Oops, where I went up there, coming along there around there. I'm, I'm going to actually cut back in because it, you can see the gravestone there and I'm just going to come down over the windscreen, over the bonnet. That's it, over the hood, should I say, if, if, if for Americans. And then I'm going to come back under. But make sure you get the, uh, the shadows. Very, very important that you capture the shadows because uh, that will just otherwise show that there's actually something still in the still in the shot there so as we come over so actually went a bit high there apologies for that and then along here and we'll go around the front of the car and join back up where we started let's go to there so generative fill and generate there we go option one it's filled in the edge of that gate there and it's added uh, some information let's have a look at option two. Oh, that comes out and puts something there. that's not so good Option three, it's quite busy through here. You know, I'm going to generate again so we can get another three options. So this is option four, option five. That works quite well, quite like that. Strange that there's a gate and nothing left next to it, but uh, yeah, not too sure about that one. We'll go back to the beginning. Yeah, that, I, you know, I quite, I quite like this one. Um, I might take out this stone and remove the gate just so it looks like the road runs into that area. Um, let's just check what we had. I quite like this one as well. So, But I think I'm going to go with option one. Great. So there's also the Laycock Pottery over here. So we're just going to remove this sign here. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take a a selection around around there I'm going to click generative fill and generate there we go that's option one which is pretty good to be honest option two that's nice as well option three I actually I'm going to go with option two like that so we just need to redo this now because these are already generative fill selections we need to really bring all these generative fills together into one layer so if i just click on any one of these generative fill layers right click and then what i want to do is i'm going to merge visible okay so it just merges them all together back into the background now we can do new selections and uh, we can remove we can remove other items that were already you know in the in the selections that we had. So I'm just gonna come around, select that. So generative fill and generate. That's option one, option two, option three. Gonna go with option three. I want to take this stone out as well. So just in this area. So I'm just gonna, again, take a selection around there, come back, generative fill and generate. There we go, that's removed that option one. Option two, that's better. And option three, I'm going to go with option three. So I just want to tidy up these stones as well in here. So I'm going to go back over to the layers here, right click and merge visible again, because what I want to do is take the remove tool and I'm just going to use the remove tool just to, to remove these few items that are just sort of in there. And this line coming across here, just want to take that out. So it just looks like there's a car parking area there. That works very well indeed. So let's just uh, hold down the space bar and we're just going to have a look around and just see if there's anything else here that needs to be that needs to be fixed. I think all of this is okay. Um, I'm wondering whether we should remove this uh, this sign that's sort of right in front of the main area. We can try so we can go into the lasso tool, select the polygonal lasso tool and we're just going to make a selection as we did previously, just using straight lines, just to, to go around this sign. So it's a nice square selection. So generative fill and generate. 
There we go. Let's put an end to that. But that works very well indeed, actually. It, and I've said this many times, but it really does surprise me how good these remove tools and generative fill tools are. So that's option one. That's option two. That's quite nice as well. It sort of fills in the bottom there. Option three. So I'm going to go with option two. I think that works the best. So holding down the space bar, we're just going to have a look around, make sure there's nothing else here that uh, is distracting. A couple of, uh, I'm just going to go to background there. There's just a couple and select remove tool, a couple of little white marks here on the road. Just want to remove those. But, uh, that works very well. And I don't want that reflection here in this puddle. So I'm just going to take that out as well. Using the remove tool, that's fine. Same here, I don't want that reflection here. And the reason for that is we're going to do our day to night and uh, if we have too many if we have too many reflections to deal with, it will make it a little bit more difficult to uh, to sort out where the reflections will be if we've got water. So that's fine. And I think I'm just going to take out this uh, this line here as well. It's uh, these are a little bit distracting. So just take those out. There we go. The remove tool is, is an awesome tool and it doesn't require the use of any tokens either uh, to remove things, whereas generative field does. So depending on your subscription pack that you have with Adobe will depend on how many tokens uh, that you, you that you actually get. So I have the photography pack, which includes uh, Lightroom and Photoshop and, and Camera Raw. Um, and that, that gives me 250 tokens uh, per month for generative fill. So I actually don't use it a huge amount, to be honest, not because I'm limited by the tokens, but um, I've found that it's really good for large object removal and more detail. But generally speaking, you can really get away with just using the remove tool uh, for most of these sort of blemishes and and bits and pieces that you need to tidy up, particularly if you've got things like labels or, you know, here there's a little electrical box on the wall. So we just draw that out using the remove tool. And it, it's exceptionally good, particularly when it's on a sort of quite detailed background. It's able to uh, to remove things extremely well. So I'm going to leave this in. This is all, all fine. I just want to take out this uh, label on the door because what we'd like to do is we're going to actually light that door and put some light coming through there. So I'd like a little bit more glass. So just remove that and remove that one there. And I'm just going to take this one out. Hopefully that, uh, just undo that by con command or control Z. That will just undo that selection there. There we go. And I can just try again not to cut into the lantern. There we go. That's better. Right. Um, so happy with all of that, I think. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom back and um, make sure that we're comfortable. I am. So we're just going to do the sky replacement now. So we're just going to bring this these two layers together. So I right click on there and merge visible. It brings them together. I go up to edit. And I go to sky replacement. So what we're going to do here is is pick a sky that we can use up here. So I'd like something a little bit more uh, sort of darker, maybe a little bit more more um, sunset sort of look. So let's try let's try this one. Yeah. What about? About this one here this is quite a busy one that's quite nice I like that one um, I'm going to go to the plus button and in the plus button um, I can go to my sky sky folders and uh, what we can do is we can have a look at uh, which skies look look good enough for me to use so I'm just going to uh, um, what I did there was clicked on the file press spacebar on max you can just press the spacebar and that gives you a preview and then I can use the cursor keys to to find my way find my way through so these are some skies that I've that I've taken that's nice with the birds crossing over um, so looking for something that uh, you know that's that's quite nice could do something with that yeah let's let's try that one there uh, so that is number nine six 
so I've got it highlighted I'm just going to click open and what it will do is it'll open it in the uh, Photoshop module and it will it will be displayed here and then all I need to do is select it once it's uh, once it's been selected there we go so there it is there so I click on that it will now apply that to to the scene there we go so there was I'm just going to click away from this module now so I tend to just click on this gray space a lot of people get to this point and click OK and that actually assigns the sky we don't want to do that because we want to make some adjustments so I'm just going to click on the gray here just away from there I'm going to add a little bit more color to that sky because I think it's got it's got a good look about it and I'm just going to darken the sky down slightly so we're just going to take the brightness down that was up just take the brightness down a little bit there we go now in regards to edge you can see here that this chimney pot here this chimney is is quite illuminated back against the sky so we we need to um, have a look at that now there's a number of ways we can do that we can use the shift edge and fade edge and we can also use the foreground lighting and if I move foreground lighting to the left you see it lights up even more same here it doesn't look natural at all so I want to put the foreground lighting to the right maybe all the way to the right but there's still a little halo effect around there so what we're going to do is just fade the edge so I can if I go right you can see that it lights the sky against the chimney pot and if I go right it darkens the sky against the chimney pot so that's better still not perfect let's bring the shift edge down a little bit um, so that the sky if I go too far you'll see it cuts into the into the roof if I come in too low it'll actually fade over so we need to find a good balance point so I'm going to go I'm going to go around about there with the shift edge about minus 11 so the other thing we could do is maybe look to flip this left to right. There is a little flip tick box here, which we can click and we can oh, I clicked it twice. We can click that and that will put the light over here. Now that works very well here because of course the lights coming in from up here down onto the road, but it's, it's quite bright. So we're just going to darken it down just a little bit more. And I just need to make sure that we've got these sort of edges dealt with. So, going to deal with the edge lighting slider here which is dealing with the foreground it's not dealing with the background and if I move that to the, the left it brightens it up if I move it to the right it will darken it down so if I can take it all the way over to the right that helps a little bit more um, I still feel we need to do a little bit more there so I'm just pushing that over a bit more now as you can see it's still not perfect around this chimney so what we can do is we can go to the refine tool we can take the refine tool make it a little bit bigger and what we can do is we can run along the edge of the sky here just like so and then we can effectively just sort of wash in that that edge there and you can see that's darkened that down I can even go in there again just add a little bit more same on this side make sure the little center cross in the middle of your circle is on the sky and then you, you can effectively click and work your way along that edge just to make sure that you uh, you really get it sorted out so I think I think that looks pretty good I'm just going to run along this edge a little bit more along here just to be sure and just let the computer catch up and um, yeah I, I think we are we are there I'm just going to do a couple little strikes over there a little bit up on the edge of the chimney here just to bring those together down the edge there Yep, that looks that looks nice. So it's quite bright over here. I'm wondering whether I need to just add a little bit into those lighter areas within the trees just to make sure we've got the, the color of the sky behind coming through. So you just hold the little cross on on the uh, on the sky color and you can see that works. That works very well. Down here is the same, so I'm just gonna just gonna pop that on there. Right. I think we're happy with that. Maybe just a little bit of color adjustment. I'm just going to throw the color slider to the right here just to bring a bit of that sky color into this scene. Maybe we can probably put a little bit more in there. And uh, I'm happy with that. Now, there is a lighting mode, and in there you have screen or multiply. Generally, multiply is the best one to go for, but if you click on screen, you, you'll get a different effect. Now, the reason why it has these two different lighting modes is if you've got a, a very dark foreground and a light background, screen works very, very well. Whereas generally speaking, if you've got a lighter foreground and a darker sky, then multiply works better. 
and that works very well. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to select duplicate layer. You do get a choice of new layers or duplicate layers. New layers gives you a separate layer for each of the separate adjustments within uh, the sky replacement that you do. So you end up with about seven, um, seven layers over here. Uh, but what we're going to do is just duplicate layer, which means we just get one more layer. Click OK. And as you can see, it's just given us a duplicate layer. Um, the background layer is the original. So if I have that one turned on and turn the, the, the front one off, you can see that's the before and that's the after. It gives us a lot more drama in the scene. I'm going to remove the background uh, layer because when I save this, I don't really want that data saved in the background. We're not going to use it again. So I've just right clicked on there um, and then I'm just going to go to delete layer. So we're just left with the the top layer that we, we've made the adjustments, including all of the generative fill is done. So happy with that, let's send it back into Lightroom. So we're going to go up to File, Close, and then we're gonna click Save. And the reason why we do File, Close, Save is that I want to close it in Photoshop. As you can see, it's now closed. And then uh, I want to effectively put it back into Lightroom. Uh, so that was the save. So if you, if you just go straight to File, Save, then you'll have to select where you want to put it and you'll also still have it open in uh, in Photoshop. By, by, by going close and save, it sends it back to Lightroom and takes it out of Photoshop. So we're back here. So what are we going to do with this image? Well, I want to do a little bit of a day tonight. I think it will work well to a day tonight. So we're going to the first thing we're going to do is going to go up to the top and we're going to reduce the brightness of the scene down. So I'm going to bring that down by approximately two stops. Uh, and then I'm going to just open up the shadows just a little bit. And the sky itself, we, we will need to brighten this up. That will need to be brightened up. So um, because if I bring up highlights just a little bit, which I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the highlights up to about plus 40. So we've still got sort of pretty, pretty good brightness in the sky up here, but we will brighten that up a little bit more. We'll do some, uh, some, some things with the sky. I want to darken down this road area. Uh, certainly do. So I'm going to go into masks. I'm going to select the linear gradient so I can pull from this side here a gradient out. As you can see, if I hold the middle line, I can rotate it. And as you can see that I can pull that up. Now, this works by the red dot is 100% of whatever you do over here. And the white dot is 0%. So it's a gradient between 100% and 0%. So if I apply another one stop reduction in exposure, I get a full one stop here and I get no change up here. So as you can see that 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 changes it there. Now if I change that to two stops, I can do that. You'll see that it gets darker down here and it's still quite bright up here. So we can we can even pull that up a little bit more to make that a little bit darker. And I think that works. I think that works well because we can relight this scene without too much trouble. And in fact, I'm going to take that down just a little bit further, down to about minus 2.3. There we go. So we've got we've got this sort of darkened down as well. We can change the light as we go, so it's not a problem. I'm just going to select, whilst we're here, going to create a new mask, select the sky. So it's going to, there we go, it's selected the sky. And what I want to do with the sky is I want to add some contrast to that sky. Not too much. I want to... Um, add a little bit of uh, color, but I want to do that up here, not down here. So I'll do that in a second. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to clarity and I'm going to add some clarity to that sky. There we go. Do you see how that really affects that? So that's no clarity and there's a good chunk of clarity. It really makes this sort of stand out a little bit of texture, not a lot, just four points there is all we need. Now I want to make this bluer up in the top corner here. So how do we do that? Right, well, we can create a new sky selection, there we go. But this time, when you hover over the sky, you'll see the three dots, and I'm gonna right click on those three dots, and I'm gonna intersect this mask with a radial gradient, okay? And what that means is, if I pull a radial gradient now down into the sky like this, you can see that it's generally, there is a little bit of bleed over onto the roof, but I'm gonna leave that, I can take that out, but I'm gonna leave that because I feel that the effect of any color of sky color change here would would sort of reflect a little bit off the roof here. But as you can see, it's it's given us a mask that's sky 
and the radio the linear gradient and that's what we're after so what I'm going to do now we're in we've got that selected is just apply the temperature slider more towards the blue there we go not too much but just enough to move away from too much purple up there so I'm just going to bring that in I'm going to move that down a bit more this way just to bring that across the top there and I'm just going to darken it slightly in that not too much there we go I, I need to bring this a little bit darker in the in, in this area up here so I can add another linear gradient uh, in this case and I can pull that down from the top there and it, and it will still be affected by the the sky mask because it I put I added it to the existing mask and I'm just going to darken that down just a little bit more as well up there that works quite well good right um can I pull that down a little bit more yeah good stuff okay so let's do a bit of day to night let's uh let's light up the front of this building let's uh and then let's decide what we're going to do with the sky up here um so i'm just going to go to uh, masks again create a new mask and we can see some lanterns let's just do a little bit of a zoom in here we can see that there are a couple of lanterns one either side of the door so we can use those to to light that up um doesn't seem to be any lanterns further away so we may have to add a lantern a bit further down just to light light the area or simulate a light that may be behind a sign or something like that but let's let's concentrate on the carpenter arms here so i'm going to go in a bit closer i'm going to go in to uh 200 percent maybe go a bit closer still mate maybe we'll go to 300 percent so we can light these these little lanterns up now how are we going to do that right what we're going to do is create a new mask we're going to go to radial gradient we're going to take a radial gradient that's bigger than the lantern itself here we go like so not too much bigger but a little bit bigger and i've put the center on the light bulb itself so that's where most of the light's going to come from. I'm now going to take the exposure right up to maximum and I'm going to add a bit of color to that. Okay, just to just to give it a little bit of a sort of incandescent look. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the radial gradient where we don't need it. All right, I'm going to go in a bit closer still so we can really get to see what we're doing. So I'm going to go 400%. So to do the removal, whilst we're in the mask, there we are, we've added the radial gradient, we're going to subtract a brush okay this brush is going to have zero feather and a hundred percent flow that means it's got a very hard edge as you can see when i click you'll get a perfect removal now we've got a curved edge to deal with here okay well how do we deal with that well we take a slightly smaller brush like this we click over there we click once just on that edge there we hold down the shift key and then we work our way round just by clicking on each of those, I must turn off the auto mask. I don't need the auto mask on. So just take that out. So just uh, click, small clicks to get the curve as you want it. And it, and you get a nice a nice edge then to your, uh, to your mask, removal of your mask. So I'm just going up there, clicking, hold, still holding down the shift key. And once I'm clear at the top, I'm just going to go across the top, hold down the shift key and click again. At the bottom here, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click. Okay, it's a really, really good way of, of creating um, the lines that you need. Same same here, you can see here, these little bars, we'll need to just darken those down. So I'm going to take a smaller brush. Okay, that one's a little bit bigger than I need. If I adjust it using the, the um, I only get certain set points. Well, that's a little bit big. Well, how do we get around that? What we do is we zoom in again we zoom in again and then we've got ourselves different sizes that fit here so i'm just going to take that there i'm going to click and then i'm just going to click shift click shift and just work my way around there there we go same on this one just coming round Still holding down that shift key so I can just get that turn in there. Now it does look pixely, but of course we are right in very, very close. All right. If we go back out to uh, 100%, you'll see that that's just not not noticeable at all. Um, so it's just, just down to the resolution at the end of the day and how much 
how much you've actually, how many megapixels you actually have. So I'm just going to zoom back in there at 300%. We're going to take the rest of these, uh, the rest of the, the radial gradient out. So I've just made the brush bigger now because we've been round and done the detail. We can we can pull in around around that edge and remove the rest of that of that radial. There we go. And to see whether you've got it all, you can hover over the mask and you can see there's a little bit there and there's a little bit across there. Hover over the mask again. There we go. So that's our mask that we've got. Works really, really well. So now what now what we need to do is we need to duplicate this mask. So I'm going to click on it, then right click, duplicate the mask, not the radial filter because I want to be able to adjust it separately. And I'm going to bring it down, make it smaller and make it the size of the light bulb itself. So a little bit bright, just going to back him off a little bit. Come out a little bit more just to make sure that lamp that lamp is uh, fully illuminated. There we go. Happy with that. If I just click away from mask, you'll see that we've got um, we've got that illuminated there. Now we do need to light up the area around this, but I'm going to do the other one first, and then we'll do the lighting uh, as as one piece. So what we're going to do is go back into masks, create a new mask, go to radial gradient, and we're going to do the same thing to this lantern here. That's nice. So let's zoom out to 100%. So, and I'm just gonna come out of the mask for a second so you can see the two lanterns are lit nicely. We now need to put some light around here. Um, so we can do that by uh, taking another mask, creating a new mask, a radial gradient, and then we can apply light effectively around the these lanterns. So you could put light, if you, if you wish, sort of coming across as such, there would be a dark area at the top. I'll show you how we deal with that. And then I'm just going to bring up the exposure in that area there, adding in a little bit of color so you can see it lights up the wall. Now what it does do by doing this is brighten the lantern a little bit too much. So you can always go back to the uh, lantern and just dim him down just a little bit. You can see I can I can bring them up or down. That's the, that's the lamp in the center. And then I can go down to mask five there and I can just just dim that down as well so depending on which mask you can there we go you can alter the brightness so you can keep the same levels that's a bit too yellow now so I'm just going to back that off just a little bit and the same with the new the new mask we've just put in that's a little bit too yellow there we go so I can always right click and duplicate this and then I can move it across to this lantern here so you'll note that I put it behind because the light will effectively, same with this one, the light will act, will be its brightest just behind. Um, at, but we don't want it to light upwards because it's got a top on the lan lantern. So inside that mask, we're just going to subtract a brush. We're going to leave the feather quite high, increase the flow slightly, and then we're just going to remove that above just a little bit. And the same with this one just going to uh, subtract a brush settings remain the same and we're just going to just darken that down just above no problem with that very good we will need a little bit of light down the door here so whilst we're inside this um, this mask here we can always add a brush okay and then we can just have lower the flow slightly and then we can just wash a little bit more light in there like so so same here, just just add in a little bit more light coming down the door. Uh, that 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 works quite well. Now there could be a bit of light on the ground, could be doing with that. So using the same brush, take a slightly bigger brush, and we can just add a little bit of light to these plants here, as though they're being illuminated by by this. And we could even add just a little bit of light coming through this gap here. Look, so just painting it in, so you've got a little bit of light coming through that gap. Maybe a little bit light over here as well. That's just coming off those lanterns. That works very well. So what do we do next? Well, we need to light some of these windows, that's for sure. Certainly these downstairs windows will need to be illuminated. So I'm going to create a new mask, a new radial. I'm going to take quite a big radial here. Now, where would the where would the light source be inside this room? Well, 
if this was the room starting left to right here, the light source is going to be over here somewhere on the ceiling. So I'm actually going to start the radial gradient up there. I'm going to make it quite big and stretch it out across this, this window. So you'll have brightest there and not so bright there. Okay, we're going to raise the exposure to maximum. I'm going to add in that little bit of color that we did previously and some magenta just to balance the color off. Um, and you might be thinking, well, that doesn't look very good. But what we're going to do is what we did previously is subtract a brush and we're going to go back to very low feather and maximum flow because we're subtracting. We can start to remove, as you can see there, we can start to remove the brush. But what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. Now we're going to go into about 300 percent. I'm going to hold down the space bar just to move that window over. And now taking a smaller brush. So again, using the square brackets to the left of the remove tool, we're just going to going to click on the main frame here and I'm just going to come down here shift click to remove the areas outside the the sort of shadow area so we're just going to put those around there as such and we're going to come across the front there across the plants so we need to do the same with uh, with the lines inside the windows here so I'm just going to take uh, a smaller a smaller one here and just remove that following following those lines as you can see we're just we're just removing them along those lines because that would be the darkest area and I'd probably think so that would be quite light um, this will be need to be a little bit lighter but not too much lighter so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce the flow I'm going to bring it down to about 70 percent so it won't be quite so it won't remove quite so much so now when I go around and I'm just going to take a slightly bigger brush here here we go and I can draw over where we've been and I can come down the edge of those windows just the same, not too big. I don't, it doesn't actually matter because I'm going to go going to go right the way across the top here. So I'm just going to come in here and then shift click. And that just brings that line. I do need to just sharpen that line up. So take a smaller brush there and then we're just going to cut down into using the shift click technique. Just going to click down into there and just pick up on those areas. So what we're doing is it's not quite so, so dark as before. So you get a little bit, you can go over it twice if you want to just make it a little bit darker. And what it does, it gives you this effect of, of different levels of light. Because remember, this is a removal brush that we're using, right? So we're going up and down here. There we go, we've gone down there. It's going to come in on this window here just in there nice and tight let's make sure that feathers really really off there and just just come in along those edges just going to go in there and come across that one and so what you're starting to see is you're starting to see different levels of darkness and uh, and brightness along these edges which is what you'd get you get quite a lot of changes in the uh, the brightness of the window so we're going to do the the inner frame now so I'm just going to again click shift click and then shift click coming across here click shift click the reason why I go from pane to pane not all the way across is because it isn't straight these old windows didn't tend to uh, lend themselves to being very straight over time they would uh, they would move slightly so what we we need to do is just make sure that we're drawing those and catching those inner edges that was very good so control or command z just to undo those so we're going to come back in there so it's quite detailed uh, this sort of workflow trying to find your way around making sure that you've got um, all the windows blacked out in a way that works very well so i'm just going to do that one there as well and then i'm kind of going to come across here so i'm going to take uh, that brush is going to have to do let's click there and just shift holding down that shift key and working your way across I need to come back across the bottom there so i'm going to just take a smaller brush along this one and uh, i'm going to again just work my way around holding down the shift key. So we've got lots of different levels of brightness depending. I'm just going to do these these front edges here. Just need taking down just a little bit. 
Go up brush size to do these bigger ones here again. So bringing those through. And we are almost there on this window. It does take a little bit of time and uh, you will need to focus on making sure that you get the outer edges of the frames uh, covered with the removal. Remember, we're removing the, uh, the, the, the radial gradient. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to take a bigger brush here. I'm going to stick the flow back up to 100. And uh, I'm just going to go around now and take out the remainder of the uh, the radial around this window. So just uh, coming around there. We're going to zoom out so we can, can see more of it. Same thing. I can just now just make sure that we've got a little bit of a, a light area right on the edge there. Just going to take that out there. There we go. Back to a big brush. And we will take the rest of this radial out. There we go. So hover over the mask. You can see there's a couple of little bits there. Just take those out. A little bit over here. That's it. I think we're there. Yep. So as you can see, when you look at the mask, you can see there's a lighter area around the frame. Because we use different levels of flow, we're able to create different levels of lighting as we removed it. So this is this is pretty um, advanced day to night. But what it does show you, as you can see from that that uh, that mask, that we have different levels of of brightness. So of course it's all in the negative. So when we move away from the mask, you can see that's the effect that we've got. So there there we go. We've we've illuminated that room now. You might say, well, yeah, it looks OK, but maybe it needs to be a bit brighter. Well, we're already at maximum exposure, so we could open up the shadows more. That's always a good thing to do when you're inside a room. And we can always add um, highlights, we can always add a little bit of highlights as well. If, they, if those things don't work and they don't get you far enough, what you can always do is click, right click and duplicate the mask again. Right now you've got two masks on top of each other. This time, the top mask, which is the one we're on at the moment, you can reduce that down. So when that's at zero, it's the same brightness as it was before. And now we can add more or less light, depending on what we want to do. That that works very, very well. It's a little bit bright along that edge there. You can see there's a little bit brighter there. I like this little reflection of it. it. looks like light's coming out from the room. But this little bit here needs to be dealt with. So we can zoom in to there. We can go back into the um, the brush. We can take a small brush and we can just drop that flow back slightly. And what we can do is we can just pop that back in there and just darken that down ever so slightly. There we go. So that looks that looks better. I think that one just needs a whisper taken off of it. OK, right, let's zoom back out. Let's have a look, see what that window looks like in the big in the big big picture looks pretty good quite happy about that so we we will need to put a little bit of light outside here uh, to show that that light is coming out through that window now we can always go back to that that uh, radial gradient there which we use the brush and then we can all, always click back on the brush that we use to add add more light so we can add a little bit of light maybe to these and that's a little bit much just control there just going to reduce that flow further and add in plenty of feather. And I'm just going to just light those those flowers up that are on the window. So you see that looks quite quite effective. And add a little bit of light round here on these, and a little bit more light on the ground here. And that just gives you that effect that the light's coming out from that window. So that works works really really well. I'm going to um, light up a couple more of these windows here. I'm going to speed the video up just so that you can uh, you don't have to sit and go through that again if you want to see more detail obviously stop the video go back and rewatch how we did this particular window um, but I'm just going to speed up the video now and uh, do these okay so we're going to zoom in like we did before I'm going to go in quite quite far this time 300 percent and we're going to go and uh, light these windows so bear with me okay
Okay, that's the uh, the third window. Now I probably will do maybe another window here. I think just to make this work, I think this window here would look really good also being done. So I'm just going to create another radial gradient. I'll talk you through this one this time. So same thing, the light's going to be just off to the side there. I think that's where we're going to be. We're going to bring that brightness up to maximum, add in some, some color, bring in that magenta to bring that sort of reality in in terms of the color that you have otherwise it can be very yellowish and i think lights tend to be a, a yellow orange so we've done the same again here we're just going to zoom in again so let's go into 300 percent and maybe this time we'll add a little bit more detail in terms of the light that's coming away so first off let's subtract a brush and let's take the uh, zero feather 100 percent flow brush which is going to give us the really hard edge that we need for the window frame itself so this this looks pretty straight so i'm just going to shift click and just take that down along that edge there i'm going to go along this top edge with the full 100 percent removal just take that out and the same down this side here i'm just going to uh just going to pick that that out so i'm just doing that shift click that i've explained to you you just find where you are and we're just going to go along the bottom of this uh this window here as well so just going to paint that last bit in there so this is the 100 percent removal so we're going to lighten off like we did before to do the inner i, I think i probably just want to line out some of these edges so i'm just going to take whilst i'm at 100 percent, just take a smaller brush here and uh, i'm just going to take a line down down the center here and you might think well this doesn't look very good um, but what what it will do is it will create contrast in the in the actual look so just run along that line as you can see so i've just just done that so we're going to go reduce the flow bring that down to about 70 percent and then we're going to infill these these other areas so i'm just going to take a slightly bigger brush here we're going to do one pass so click and then shift click to do that and that's got us to this point and then shift click down here that will bring us down so we've got a slight difference in the line there you can see it um, so we're just going to come across the bottom here like so and if we want to just add shade we can half cover it because we're doing 70% we can do multiple multiple covers here I think we need to put a, a little darker line in in that that little corner there so I'm just going to bring one down inside that line there and then we're going to we're going to continue to shade out these these windows so just click and then shift click as we've been doing and then along the bottom there that's it down the side and because we put that other line in and you watch when we go across you can still see you can still see that line just go off the bottom there and make this brush a little bit bigger we'll go back up through here to there and you can still see those lines right and that just shows you that, that there's like a different different level of, of lighting effectively that we we get now it may not look authentic at the moment but give me a chance and what we'll do is we will uh, just going to sh shade those corners slightly just going to reduce that flow down and just ease that out there we go right remember to hover over the mask just to see that you've got everything you have and can you see the window can you see those 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 lights those the, the frame shadows they work very very well so so happy with that now we need to just change the color slightly it's a bit bright so we can back it off slightly that's it we can add in a little bit more more color to that and a little bit more magenta just just not too much just to balance it off i think that works quite well now the great thing is we can go back to the radial and if we want more of a gradient here we can just move that in bear in mind we've put the mask in so we can we can change how much we want how much we don't want so you can see there we can we can affect that quite well it's still a little bit bright so we're just going to bring it down a little bit more there we go now maybe you want to see the light bulb right so what we could do is click on this radiant duplicate the mask okay now it's it's very bright because we've got two but look if we take a small a smaller gradient now of this top one and we move that into the shot even if we made it even smaller we could put that as though it's in the shot just 
dim that down just a little bit. There we go. Looks like the light bulb is actually through the curtains. You can see that. So let's go back out to fit. So we can look at those lights now and say, well, are they too bright or not too bright? That is too bright. So we can go back into there. We can take that room and just dim it down just a little bit more. There we go. And if the light bulb, we think the light bulb is a little bit too bright, we can also bring that back just a little bit as well. So that works quite well. Now, normally I would continue to uh, add a little bit more light down here, uh, maybe light up some of these windows and put a little bit of light down here. But for the sake of uh, the length of the video, I'm, I'm not going to show that here. I might do a little bit more uh, outside of the video just to just to add a little bit more interest further down. Um, I would like to try and cast a bit more light out here on the road. So I'm just going to go straight back in, grab a radial, and I'm just going to put a radial out here that's at the same angle as, as the building itself and just, just bring in a little bit more light there. There we go. And just add that little bit of yellow in just as though we're getting a bit more, more light out there. And with the sky, we definitely need to brighten the sky up over there. So I'm going to create a sky mask. I'm going to go to the three dots and intersect it with a radial gradient. And then I'm going to pull the radial gradient across this part of the sky here, which is the bit that's very bright. Um, and I think I want to subtract. I don't want the, uh, maybe we can add a little bit to there. Let's just try that. Let's just bring that brightness up just a little bit. Here we go. Bring that brightness up. Quite like the contrast there. Add a bit more contrast to that. So we've got quite a bright bit there. And what we want to do is we can take that brightness now and we can apply it down here. And even we could cast a shadow from the from the um, from the church tower. So what we can do is we can take another mask, another radial. We can bring it down here, nice and big, just the same. Just give it a slight tilt. Bring that down here as though we're getting that light coming from from the sky there, and just brighten that up. Add in a bit of colour just to match it to the sky. A little bit of magenta there, just to, and you can see that sort of looks like it's lighting up, lighting up that area. Just make it a little bit bigger. Move it slightly to the left there. That works quite well. I'm just going to dim that one down a little bit because that light there's coming out from here. Now, how do we put a shadow? How do we cast a shadow in there? Well, we subtract a brush. I'm going to go to 100% feather and I'm going to go quite low on the flow, about 50%. Right. And what we need to do is effectively have a, a large shadow at the top round about here, moving to a smaller shadow at the bottom, right? Because it's it's put away. So if I click there to remove and then make it smaller as it falls away, perhaps about there, and use the shift, use the shift to do the straight line again. So it, that's okay. I want it a bit darker. So rather I can just make that brush bigger again up here and hold down the shift, go back. So then you get this almost effect there of, of the uh, of the, the tower itself. I'm going to back the, f the flow off just a bit more. I'm going to take a bigger brush here and I'm just going to bring that down across here to a bigger brush just to make it a little bit less. There we go. So it just sort of faints it off a little bit. Now we don't want it over here because the sky, these these trees would, would be effectively picking this up. So I'm just going to bring that flow back up to 50% and I'm just going to wash that bit away over there and over there. There we go. So you've got the church effectively reflecting on there. Now this yellow from these lights is a bit too much. So I'm just going to go back into that one and reduce that just a little bit more. Take that yellow away. And uh, and I think that works quite well. I just want to light up the carpenter arm sign. So create a radial gradient. Take a little radial gradient. Just twist it to, to so it fits over that sign. Just nice. And then what we're going to do is just raise the exposure slightly, add in a little bit of contrast. And uh, and I think for now, I'm going to call that done. As I say, I will do a little bit more here. So the finished image you'll see will have some of these windows illuminated now. But you've seen how I've done it. You see how it's done and how you put the light in outside. Um, so let's just give that full screen. So there you go. So the Carpenter Arms in Laycock in Wiltshire, England. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you've got any questions uh, or comments, feel free to put them down below. I try very hard to answer 
all the questions and, and respond to all the comments and um, thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video if you haven't already subscribed please feel free to do so and join me on this wonderful adventure i'm having on youtube and uh, for now i'm gonna say bye bye <laughs>